Hey, welcome to my channel. If this is your first time, thank you so much for watching. A couple months ago, I did a challenge where I just used up everything we had on hand and only went grocery shopping for $25 in groceries to make up for all the fresh items. And since then, I've got a lot of requests to just buy $25 and make an entire menu with just that food. So that's what I'm doing today. With the rising prices in groceries, I totally understand having to stay on a very tight budget. So I've made a couple of breakfasts and several dinner options. But first, let's head to the store and see what we need to get. Okay, so this is my list for here at Aldi for my budget-friendly meals. I'm looking at so far $23.68 before tax, according to what I wrote down online. So let's go shopping and see what we can actually get, and we'll try to make it under $30. So the eggs were on sale for $1.99, but they are sold out. So we're just gonna grab some of these um, large brown eggs. They are usually around $3, so these are the free range large brown eggs. So that must be three, three thirty nine, dollars I think. So we'll grab this for three thirty nine dollars today, and that'll be our first thing. We're gonna be grabbing a, a milk. Since the organic milk is the same price as the 2%, then we're just gonna, um, we're gonna grab one of these. It's the same price, so. so. This is the sausage I'm gonna grab. The pork sausage roll is $2.29. I'm gonna grab one of these. I'm gonna be grabbing one of these boxes of mac and cheese for 50 cents. If you have a Walmart near you, they should have one as well. So this is gonna be one of our treat meals this week. One pound of penne for 98 cents. So let's grab that. Next, I'm gonna grab some lentils for $1.29. I'm gonna grab this 10 count of flour tortillas. I don't think it's $3. I think it's something to something. So let's check at the register for that a can of chicken breast. I could use this for two meals. This is 12 and a half ounces. So one or two meals for this, just depending on how I want to add it. But you could do tuna instead. It's 87 cents for the five ounce. So this is 17.4 cents per ounce for the tuna and 25.2 cents per ounce for the chicken. So we um, are gonna just try doing the chicken this, this time around and next time maybe I'll do tuna. So let's just add that. Next, I'll grab a can of these diced tomatoes. They have a similar one at Walmart too with the basil and garlic. This one has oregano also, it's 85 cents. And I'm also going to grab a can of tomato sauce for 43 cents. Then a can of black beans for 77 cents. So they have this five pound uh, baking potatoes here for 3.68, and this is about the same price you should get at Walmart. Uh, normally, I would get this large 10 pound of russet potatoes for four dollars and four cents, but in the interest of keeping things the same price for most people watching this video, I'm just going to get the five pounds just to make sure I don't go over using five pounds because I think you could probably get a five pound bag for about four bucks almost anywhere um, that has a Walmart. So let's grab one of those. And I'm gonna grab some spinach for $1.19. This is an eight ounce package. You could also go with frozen spinach if it's cheaper. And then we'll grab one onion, this time a white onion, but yellow or sweet are good too. It's 87 cents a pound. We're just gonna grab one here, about a pound. And last but certainly not least, I'm gonna grab one bag of the vegetable mix for 85 cents. Our total for all of the budget meal items is $22.85 today at Aldi. So all together, this is what we picked up for our budget-friendly meals. So let's see what we can make. The first breakfast recipe is sausage and potato breakfast casserole. All I did was brown the sausage in a large pan. While that was browning, I also cooked my diced potatoes in some water with salt until they were fully cooked through, and then I drained those, set those aside. I sauteed the onions in the sausage, then I added my strained potatoes in, gave that a good mix, and added that to a casserole dish. Then in a bowl, I mixed together my eggs, milk, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. I whisked that all together and then poured that on top of my meat and potato mixture. After that, I just covered it with foil and baked it for about 30 minutes until those eggs were completely cooked through. After taking it out of the oven, I let it rest for five minutes before serving. Now I'm going to wrap them in tortillas as well and I went ahead and froze them so we could easily reheat them for breakfast for the rest of the week. If you happen to have any salsa or cheese or hot sauce on hand, I highly recommend adding it to the burritos or if you're eating it in a bowl, adding to that. It just levels it up a little bit more, but it's perfectly delicious just the way it is too. 
And this dish is super easy to modify, so if you don't like sausage, you can add in whatever meat you like, or you can do it without meat. Just make sure you add the seasonings that you enjoy because a lot of the flavor comes from the sausage, so just keep that in mind. This next breakfast dish came together super quickly. So first I started by mixing together the eggs, milk, salt, pepper, onion powder, and garlic powder in a bowl. If you get eggshells, you can just remove them with another eggshell. <laughs> just a little tip for you. And you can modify this any way you like with the seasonings. You can add or take away any of the flavors that you prefer. So keep that in mind when you're mixing together all of these eggs here, because that's going to really flavor the dish in this one. Once those were all mixed together, I heated a large nonstick pan and added some butter. If you don't have butter, you can use oil. If you don't have oil or butter, you can simply just use a little bit of water and it will help it cook as well. First, I sauteed my onions until they were nice and translucent and soft. The onions are going to give this dish a nice balance in textures and that's why I'm using the onions in addition to adding a lot of flavor. Onions add a ton of flavor to dishes. I'm also going to season the onions with salt and pepper and that really helps bring out all of the flavors. Then I'm going to be adding about two large handfuls of spinach. It's somewhere between two and three ounces of the bag of spinach that we have and I'm going to let that wilt down quite a bit but not completely wilted before I go on to the next step just until I'm seeing everything really nice and and soft and wilted. Then I'm gonna add the egg mixture on top and push that around as it cooks until it's almost completely cooked through. Just as it's about to be done cooking through, I like to take it off the heat and let it finish cooking off the heat, but that's just my personal preference. You can cook them any way that you like. This is what's easy about scrambled eggs is there's really no one perfect way to make scrambled eggs. You can make this more like an omelet if you like. It's totally up to you. And again, you can add all kinds of flavors to this, maybe some chili flakes if you're looking for a little added spice. And when it's finished, you can even top it with some salsa, some spicy sauce, anything that really tickles your fancy here. And it makes a really delicious balanced breakfast for the morning. You can see that I added hot sauce because that's one of my favorite things to add to eggs. And I did have a couple of those tortillas left, so I actually wrapped my breakfast in a tortilla that morning. This dinner idea is one of my favorites. It's a chicken pot pie casserole, or you could also call it a chicken pot pie soup. It's kid friendly. My whole family enjoyed it. This is how I made it. So first I started by sauteing some onions and butter. Again, you can use oil or water. Either one is fine. And I'm just gonna saute those onions until they're nice and translucent and soft. It's about a quarter cup to a half cup of onion. We just have one big onion to work with. So we're just gonna try to make sure that we have enough for all the dishes. Then I'll add my poultry seasoning, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and thyme. And I'm gonna saute that until it's all mixed up and a little bit cooked to kind of bloom the spices and add a little bit more flavor. Then I'm gonna add some flour. So if you don't have flour on hand, that's okay. You don't have to make it creamy. You can just make it a regular soup without all of the creaminess, but the flour is going to allow the soup to thicken and kind of give it more of that pot pie feel to it, but it's definitely not necessary. And again, if you only have salt and pepper, that will work too. The more seasonings, the better though. You're adding a lot of flavor this way and really making the budget-friendly items more enjoyable. I definitely recommend just grabbing a couple spices if it's in the budget. Next, I'm gonna be adding the liquids, about a half a cup at a time, just alternating the water and the milk and just whisking it or mixing it with a wooden spoon to avoid all of the lumps. And we're just gonna mix it up really well until we've got all of the liquid incorporated. Then we'll add the potatoes and the chicken. After this, you're gonna see whether or not you have enough liquid added to cover the potatoes. If you don't, go ahead and add a little bit more water or a little bit more milk, whatever you have on hand, just to cover the potato mixture so that way it's all completely covered. And we're going to bring that to a boil, reduce the heat, and then let that cook for about 10 to 12 minutes just until the potatoes are fork tender when you poke at them and they're almost completely cooked through. Although we have a little bit more cooking time after this, so it doesn't have to be completely cooked through to continue. So about 10 to 12 minutes on those potatoes. After the potatoes are cooked through, we'll add in the frozen veggies. Then we're gonna bring that to a boil again, reduce the heat, and just cook that for an additional five minutes. This is just going to continue to cook the potatoes and also get the veggies nice and cooked through and then it's ready to serve after that. You can serve it with a side of toast if you have that on hand or some biscuits. Anything would be good on the side, some crackers or it's perfect as is. You can top it with some fresh cracked peppers, some fresh herbs, just anything that you have on hand that sounds delicious, you can add to it. But again, it's super delicious and my kids ate this entire thing. 
This next meal is a nice light Italian lentil soup. This is one of my favorites because it's packed full of veggies and gets protein from the lentils. It's absolutely delicious. So first I started by heating a large stock pot or Dutch oven, added some oil. Again, if you don't have oil, you can use water, then sauteed those onions until they were soft and translucent. Then I added my frozen veggies and my lentil beans. Now I measured out a cup and then rinsed this in a mesh strainer before adding it, just to make sure that I picked it through and got those all cleaned up. Then just sauteed that for about a minute or so just to heat that all through to get it started so that way it didn't take as long to boil everything. Then I added the potatoes on top and my seasonings, just salt, pepper, thyme, oregano, and garlic powder. Then I topped that with my diced tomatoes and about six to seven cups of water. And if you're finding that after boiling it that it reduces a little bit too much, you can add more water later, that's perfectly fine. After all the ingredients have been added, then we're gonna bring this to a boil reduce the heat, cover, and simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes until the lentils are cooked through and the potatoes are tender. So you can check it at 25 minutes, and if you find that it needs just a few more minutes, just add a little bit more time. You can stir here and there just to make sure that nothing sticks to the bottom too. And after that, we'll stir in the spinach until it's nice and wilted, just a couple of minutes, and then season to taste before you serve it. Just add a little more salt and pepper, any of the other seasonings as well. The seasonings really do make a big difference in this soup, so just make sure you taste test before you serve. This dish has the potential to have a ton of leftovers. It makes about six to eight servings, depending on how much you eat, and it really is a great option to have a balanced meal for both dinner and possibly lunch the next day. Now this next recipe turned out to be one of my favorites as well. It's sausage and penne, and it's super easy, comes together in less than 30 minutes on this one. You're just gonna use the other half pound of sausage in a large pan, saute that until all of the sausage is nice and browned and cooked through. Now I am just gonna be adding a little bit more olive oil to this. You can either do that before you add the sausage in, or like I'm doing, I add it later on. There really wasn't a rhyme or reason to the way that I added the oil, I just wanted a little bit of oil to kind of coat the pasta and add a little bit more of like a sauciness to it. Although if you don't have olive oil, that's perfectly fine. You really don't need to add any at all. The sausage will do the job. Then I just seasoned it with garlic powder and a bunch of Italian seasoning. I use Mrs. Dash because it doesn't have any sodium in it, but you can use any kind of Italian seasoning that you like. Really add a lot, like a tablespoon. It's gonna add a lot of flavor to this dish. And if you don't have Italian seasoning, you can just use any kind of Italian herbs like oregano or parsley, basil, things like that. Then in a separate pot, I did cook my pasta as directed on the package and strained it. After that, I added it to my sausage and then added my spinach. I gave that a really good stir until the spinach was nice and wilted, but not over wilted. I like it to still have a little bit of texture. And then I just served it. And you can add anything you want on top if you have anything on hand. You could add some red pepper flakes to it. You can add chili oil like we did or Parmesan cheese, whatever you have on hand. But honestly, it is so good just like it is. It really does not need anything else. But we love spicy, so I tend to add spicy things to my dish later on. Here's a little picture of what it looked like with the spice. Oh my goodness, so good. Next, we're making a lentil and black bean soup. This one is gonna knock your socks off. It's so full of flavor. First, I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of oil to my large Dutch oven. Again, you can just use water or butter, whatever you have on hand. Add your onions, and then we'll saute that till it's nice and translucent and soft. Then I'm gonna add my seasonings, the cumin, garlic powder, and chili powder. And it is quite a bit of seasonings, and this is really gonna add a ton of flavor. I'm gonna stir that up a little bit just to get it nice and cooked and kind of bloom those spices. This is the one dish on this menu that I highly recommend really getting these spices for. It's gonna totally change the way this dish tastes. So definitely try to incorporate that into the budget for the week if you can. Then I'll add the black beans, tomato sauce, and the lentils that I've already rinsed and picked through. I'll just add that in and then four cups of water. This soup is supposed to be thick, but if you like a thinner soup, you can definitely add more water, or if you're trying to stretch it, you can definitely add more water. Make sure that you're scraping all of the beans and the sauce out of the can with a spatula too. You really wanna get every little bit of flavor in this. And then you're just going to bring it to a boil, 
reduce the heat and cover it. Simmer for about 25 to 30 minutes again until the lentils are tender. Check it at 25 minutes and see if it needs to go another five minutes or so. And after that, you're just gonna serve it as is. This is one dish that would also be good with cheese, but honestly, the flavor is so delicious. You don't need to add anything at all to this dish. It's amazing. This last dish on this menu is a treat meal and it's designed to be super fast and easy, like a Friday night meal or a meal you can just throw together when you're super busy on those days where you're just tired and over it. Well, it's just box mac and cheese and it is so delicious if you add in about half a can of that canned chicken or you can do tuna. Either way, they are great either way, so you can just choose your preference. And if you don't have butter, you definitely don't even have to add it, but you do have the milk on hand, so definitely add the milk and the powdered cheese. And there you go, it's just a super easy dish to throw together on a busy night, and it's full of protein, and it feels like a real treat to have this too. I love box mac and cheese. One of my favorite little go-tos. This one is the one from Aldi, but again, they do have some at Walmart for 50 cents or close to that price. So check that out. I like to top mine with some fresh cracked pepper, sometimes some hot sauce, of course. But again, it's just perfect the way it is. Serve it as is. The kids will probably gobble this one up too. I know that I did. I hope you enjoy these recipes and this menu. Please let me know in the comments if you've made anything a little bit differently, if you added anything, what you thought of the recipes. And I will be making more of these soon, so stay tuned. Subscribe to see more and put that little bell on for notifications. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching.